round pick. And again, like when I looked at the backs, there were no other backs like him in this whole draft. He's very, very different than every other back in this draft and different than the, than the backs the Packers have. The Packers have not had a back like this. Um, and I, some people will say they haven't had a back like this since Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy was not like this guy. Eddie Lacy, better. Way Eddie better. Lacy ran, ran and looked for contact because I think he was tired and wanted to stop running. So he tried to run into people. So then he would get tackled. Um, <laughs> But I, look at some of his long runs. You remember some of those ones where he got out in yeah. space? He's like looking around, like, come on, looking, somebody kiss me. Right. <laughs> somebody tackle me so I can stop running. Uh, but, th- but this guy will avoid, like, he will punish people and run physical, but he does try to put moves on people and avoid the tacklers. So that's very different. Now, the, and, and he's, he's got good speed, especially for his size. He's really thick in his legs and his thighs. Like that's a different thing too. That Lacey was kind of top heavy and his shoulders and upper body too, though. Yeah. Like, no, no. I he's mean, got, he's got like, the difference is he doesn't have a gut. Lacey had a gut. Right, he was right. thick around the middle. This guy's thin around the middle and he's yeah. just got huge shoulders and he, like his arms aren't terribly like, they don't look like a he-man or anything. Right. But his shoulders are huge. His chest is huge. And then his legs are huge. Yeah. So it's like, he runs through dudes. Like you, you're not going to bring him down. By touching his leg, like you try arm, like you know, grabbing his upper leg to bring him down, it ain't happen. Especially if you're a defensive back, uh-uh. he's running right through you. It's that's what I saw on the, on the video. I was like, forget it. You're not tackling this guy down low if you're a corner. But if you go high, you're just gonna bounce right off him. Uh, you go high, he just grabs you and he shoves you. There's one play where he looked like Marshawn Lynch. He just grabbed the guy and shoved him on the ground and then ran for a dang 70 yard touchdown. That was like his first game he ever played him when he's a freshman. Oh, that that's right. Yeah. Touch, that was his fourth touchdown of that game. He got the ball, spun around because there was nowhere to go. A corner came from out of nowhere. He was tackled him. He grabbed him with the other arm on the inside arm. He was over here. He grabbed him, shoved the corner, threw him on this side of his body, then ran for 70 yards and a touchdown. That's pretty dang awesome if you ask me. This guy looks like if he took Dorsey Levens and mixed him with Marshawn Lynch, that's what he looks like. So that makes me happy. Dorsey Levens is one of my all-time favorite backers, as you know, and a lot of people that know us know. And that's pretty cool. I like that. He's not shifty. In no way is he shifty. He's a one move. He can move, make one move. There's times you watch the film, and he's trying to make a guy miss, or he's got to cut back and do this. He takes really kind of choppy steps. It's not like Aaron Jones, where Aaron Jones is like, no. This guy's like, uh, uh, no. But if he goes, and then he sees it, and he just, then he's gone. He's got good acceleration. His top speed is, is is not like super fastest, but his acceleration through the hole is fast. Like when you watch him play, when he makes this decision and he goes, he can cut right through there and guys are not bringing him down. His strides keep going. What I would like to see is sometimes when guys grab him up his upper body, he'll stop his feet and try to shove the guy instead of keeping his feet moving. Because sometimes mm-hmm. if you keep your feet moving, you'll run right through him, you know, and then just break right through. So sometimes I, he probably needs to work on that. The other thing I noticed, terrible in pass protection just got awful and it's because he doesn't he's not very good laterally okay so like if he if he's got to sit there and a, and a, and a blitzer is coming right and the blitzer gives him like a juke move to go around him he's not quick enough to adjust and and get in the way there's one play where i watched him he, he got the fake handoff your you know play action play and he goes up there's a guy who went right through the middle nobody blocked him it's which kind of sucked but he went up to try to block him and a guy just went juked right around him caused a fumble his team, the other team, picked it up, ran all the way for touchdown because the quarterback fumbled. And it was his fault. He didn't pick up the blitz. Mm-hmm. Now, the guy went right through the middle. Nobody even touched him. There wasn't really much he could do about it. But it was a linebacker, and it wasn't a DB. And he still wasn't quick enough to get in front of that linebacker to stop him. But it was pretty much right after the fake. So it's, it's, it was a tricky play for anybody to make, I think. But that's one thing where, like, if it was third down and crunch time and you need a back back there to help protect Aaron Rodgers, Dylan's not the guy you want back there. You want, at this time, you want uh, Jamal Williams back Jamal there. Jamal Williams, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and and so that's going to be a problem where if Dylan's back there, everybody's going to be like, oh, they're going to run her up the gut. If Aaron mm. Jones is back there, like, well, it could be anything, but he's not going to pass protect. And if, and if it's Jamal Williams, it's like, well, it could be a screen pass. It could be a run. It could be a delay handoff. It could be whatever. Um, that's the only thing that's kind of disappointing is all these guys are so different that when, they, when they're in the game, the defense kind of knows what's up, you know? 
Right. And you don't want to be that predictable, but hopefully, well, hopefully he can develop those other things with, with coaching and, and with repetition and whatever. I mean, I know he wasn't asked to do a lot of that stuff with, with no, at Boston college. So it was basically like, Hey, you're a freak athlete. We're giving you the rock, like 75% of the, the offensive plays. And we know you're playing against a stacks box, go get it. And he, he was productive. The things I noticed though, in some of the, the game tapes that concern me a little bit about, about Dylan being his success translating to the Packers and his production is that a lot of the, the holes on the offensive line for him in college, I noticed were some pretty big holes. Not and, always. Okay. I no. watched three games. Right. I watched three games today and I beg to differ my friend. All right. Well, I hope but so. That's we'll get about, to it. Well, the, the, okay. Then the, the big plays, most of the big oh, yeah. plays, right. But, yeah. but the Packers don't open up many big holes. Right. They open up little slivers and that's why Aaron yes. Jones works for him. Cause he's got yeah. great vision and he can slip through there and then he can make stuff happen. Um, so I guess in terms of expecting with this offensive line, that the Packers have, I would not anticipate AJ Dillon having a lot of explosive plays or big runs. I think he can be successful. I think he can be productive and maybe that's all they need him to be through this first year of his career. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I got some stats I want to talk about him because I kind of was okay. doing some things. These are really, I think they're awesome, but All whatever. Right. right, so last year he had 318 carries, 1,685 yards, and 15 touchdowns, right? I watched one game he had like 42 carries in. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and he just, like, they, 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 Boston College couldn't even pass the dang ball. It was honestly pathetic to watch this game I was watching. But he just ran all over the place. And sometimes there's nothing there. There are times where he got blown up because the guys got beat. But more often than not, he moved forward, dude. He broke tackles and he moved forward. And then sometimes he just – and then as the game went on, like the first quarter, it wasn't a whole lot of big plays for him. But by the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, he's breaking off 30-yard runs, 40-yard runs, 70-yard runs. It was like one of those was a 60-yard run. It was just like – he's just <clears> – like I said, he's like Dorsey. Remember Dorsey? Everybody's like, oh, as the game goes on, he gets better. Well, he didn't get better. Defense got tired and got sick of him running him over. That's what happened. <laughs> So it has nothing to do with him getting any better. Just the defense got tired. And that's what happened with this guy. Here's the other thing really cool. Are you ready for this? They said he faced on 75% of his carries, he faced a stack box, which would be eight men in the box. Okay. Against, so that means he's going up against eight guys trying to stop him. And there's only six or five blockers in front of him. Right. So if you, if you look at that, there was 240 carries he had against a stack box okay his yardage was 1236 yards against a stack box on 240 carries which is a 5.15 yards per carry his, his yards per carry by the way um just total carries that uh, 518 carries for 1685 yards was 5.29 yards per carry just so you know his normal carry is 5.29 so his yards per carry against the stack box is 5.15 here's the thing that's even more crazy on those 240 yard, 240 carries against the stack box, he had 823 yards after contact. 823 yards after contact on 240 carries. You know what that averages? 3.4 yards per carry after contact. You know what that means? This guy, after contact, will get you a first down on three carries. That is freaking nuts. This guy is a freaking monster, dude. Monster. 66.5% of his yards were after contact in a stack box. That's crazy. That's that freaking crazy. He is a giant monster of a dude who's going to kill people. Well, he's not going to kill anybody, but he's going to run over dudes, and they're going to wish they were dead, because I'll tell you that. And I'm excited. I love – you know me. I love – I've always liked running backs more than anything in the world. I don't know why. It's just my thing. <laughs> but, man, this guy – Whew, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So think about that. 3.4 yards per carry after contact against a stack box. That's – and then there were play. There was one play there. I, I remember – it, it was a highlight, and they were like – it was like third and nine. And they're like, well, on third and nine, nobody's going to run the ball up the middle. I mean, you're not going to be able to get the first down with that. And then they, they'll show the play. Sure enough, it's a run up the middle. The A.J. Dillon he gets 11 yards. They're like, well, I guess A.J. Dillon can get – get a first down on third and nine up the middle, but he's the only one I can think of that get a first down that way. And it's true. The guy's a monster, dude. He's a monster. 